Green Lantern is down and a giant robot is taking out the city. The Flash quickly dismantles it while they try to deal with it, and a mysterious man is controlling it from a distance. The Justice League is all down, except for Superman, who gives Batman a shot at taking it out, and Batman doesn't miss. It starts to self-destruct, and the Flash runs fast to stop it, causing him to vanish as well as a chunk of the city. Flash wakes up alongside the rest of the team, and no one is there to answer. Martian Manhunter tries to contact Superman and Batman, but he gets a stroke of visions. They spread out to search for them, but find a completely peaceful city, set in the 60s or something. Flash jokes that they got blasted into the past, but the date checks out. They find a burglary in the distance. Music Master is up to no good, and Green Lantern stops him, but Music Master blasts him away. Green Lantern then manages to snatch away his instrument from him, all while Flash is watching. Suddenly, a random hero arrives at the scene and punches Flash. Green Lantern retaliates, and then Catman arrives to join the fight. The rest of the League arrives, and another random Green Lantern joins the fight. He cages Hawkgirl, and Flash gets up to join the battle before Streak takes him out. The Lanterns fight each other, testing each other's might. Martian Manhunter is blasted away, and Flash saves a random kid from the rubble. Seeing this, Streak realizes he's a good guy and stops all the fighting. He proposes a chat, and they go back to their base. They introduce themselves as the Justice Guild of America, with Catman, Black Siren, Green Guardsman, Tom Turbine, and Streak. Ray Thompson is a junior member of the group, but then the Martian starts to get dizzy. They offer him cookies, and Green Lantern tells Hawkgirl to calm the heck down. Green Lantern then tells Flash that the guild is basically all made of comic book characters. He grew up on them, and Flash tries hitting on Hawkgirl. At the same time, the villains are holding a meeting of their own. They argue within themselves, not believing there are new heroes at the scene, and propose a contest to see who can pull off the biggest crime. The winner gets to plot the demise of all the superheroes. Back at the Justice Guild, Turbine theorizes about parallel dimensions. When Flash was struck with energy while running, he changed his frequency rate, which then made him tear through dimensions. They all look at him like he's guilty. To go back to their world, Turbine shows them a new device he's been working on that allows interdimensional travel, but he hasn't discovered a sufficient energy source. In the meantime, it's time for coffee and dessert. Police arrive at the door, delivering a letter to the guild. The letter reads a warning from the villains, announcing their greatest trick of all. The Justice League joins them and are inducted as honorary members of the guild. They split into teams, and Flash once again picks the girls. Turbine stays behind to continue working on the device while the team sets out. They run to the source of trouble, and Green Lantern is honored to fight alongside the team. One of the villains steals a ruby, and he's caught red-handed. Music Master blows a museum roof before escaping on a plane. Hawkgirl almost gets him, but Green Guardsman stops her from doing so in order to save the plane. He suggests using his wits, and meanwhile, the city is opening a new fair. It gets interrupted by one of the villains, Blizzard, but Flash steps in. The two teams continue fighting before the wizard disappears from the scene. Meanwhile, another crime takes place, and Catman follows the culprit. Martian Manhunter flies above, and the villain blasts them with a device. Back with Hawkgirl, she awaits the plane and chases it around, causing mayhem around the streets. They save the civilians before catching up to the plane, and Hawkgirl gets blasted by the music, and Music Master gets away. Bootleg Dr. Freeze is fighting Flash, and Flash beats him, but is forced to tend to a bus full of nuns, crashing the bus after saving them. Unfortunately, they both get captured by the bootleg Dr. Freeze, the greatest prize of all. Catman is still struggling, and it's not looking good for the guild. Martian Manhunter gets another stroke, as suddenly, he gets a glimpse of an apocalyptic world. Catman goes back for him, and later on, Hawkgirl wakes up in the middle of a cemetery. She finds a shocking gravestone of the Green Guardsman and the rest of the guild. She goes back to tell her friends and they start to get suspicious, but Green Lantern refuses to believe it and storms off, so she flies after him. Meanwhile, the villains compare their victories to decide who the winner is, and Dr. Blizzard arrives with his crowning achievement. They hand him the title, and this is just the beginning. Back at the guild, they are informed that the Injustice Guild is on the move. They go after them, and at the same time, Green Lantern is at their gravestones with Hawkgirl. He finally accepts that they're all gone, and they decide to get some answers. As an ice truck is making its way around town, Green Lantern stops it. He asks about the graves, and the driver gets nervous. Green Lantern accuses him of never selling anything to anyone, and the driver says that he might hear them. Back at the guild, they find the bad guys with Flash and Siren as bait. Music Master blasts them while the rest are attacked, 
The magician uses his tricks to tie them up, and it's up to Catman. He breaks inside a hotel and goes up the elevator with a motorcycle until he can dive on top of the blip. After breaking inside, he takes them out. Meanwhile, Green Lantern and Hawk Girl reach the city library and find it completely empty. They check up the books, but they're all empty, as if history has been wiped. They check the newspaper archives in the basement, and it's blocked. So Hawk Girl has enough and smashes through. They find a subway station that looks like it went through an earthquake, but Hawk Girl says that these are battle scars. They find a paper that says a war broke out. Back on the blip, Catman is taking out the villains. Streak frees up the rest, while Flash continues to flirt with Siren as he punctures the blip. Flash saves Siren from falling and Turbine frees them both. As the blip crashes, Catman rounds them all up outside. They are arrested and taken away by police, but even Flash senses something is off. Back at the Guild House, Green Lantern says that these are not the Justice Guild. He shows them the news article and tells them about the graves, but they're interrupted by a police call asking for help. Before they go, Green Lantern stops them. He explains that nothing around here makes sense. Their world is an illusion. Every time someone starts to figure things out, trouble springs up out of nowhere. They confront Ray, the little kid, as he turns out to be the source behind this illusion. His true form suddenly appears, and he attacks before a monster breaks in. The guild attacks and falls for it. Green Lantern says that the kid is the real menace, and they need to focus on him. Flash sinks to the floor, and the kid blocks Green Lantern's attacks with ease. Martian Manhunter tries to creep from behind, but he's taken out. Same with Hawk Girl. Suddenly, the guild senses that something is wrong. They are hesitant to help, but they are willing to die doing the right thing. They attack Ray and turn on him, as both leagues gang up on him. Ray lashes out, but he's not powerful enough to take all of them at the same time. Streak runs, streaks around him, but he's blasted away. They all focus their attacks on his shield, and he finally crumbles. The illusion goes away, and they all vanish from existence. The shattered world takes over except for the Justice League. The Martian explains that Ray mutated due to the radioactive fallout and was able to reshape the world. Suddenly, the ice cream truck appears, as do the people of the city. They were all real, but they woke up from a dream. They plan to rebuild their world and thank the Justice League. After that, they get to the device Turbine was working on to go back home. Green Lantern powers it using his ring, and they use it to get through. In the aftermath, they explain what happened to the rest of the League, and Green Lantern is visibly upset because of what happened. They were his childhood comic book heroes, and that messed him up. This was probably the very first story to suggest parallel worlds in the world of comics. Who would have known that the original Justice League would set the ground stones for the MCU multiverse theory decades later? The story was bittersweet, as we saw something out of our childhood fantasy, but then in the end it was all fake, an illusion from a broken kid's mind. Well, this brings us to the end of today's video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like this one. Your support helps us grow. And tell me what you think about this story. Do you prefer the Justice Guild to any other superhero faction? What do you think of this original parallel universe story that started it all? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of them. And if you're watching till now, thank you. I'll see you in another video soon.